I'm Alice Keith and I make stuff, art. I do collage or fun object things. And I'm not sure I can call them art, but I suppose I should show the art. I draw, that's basically what I do, I draw. Basically it's just life and people, human beings. Um, <laughs> You hope for the best, but it's not always what you get, so that's the one thing. Um, and the other difficult things is just also uh, my chronic migraines that makes it really difficult to survive. The difficult thing is just life in general. It's not easy. Um, I, w I want to be a girl again where your biggest concern is like what kind of color smart to eat first, you know what I mean? That would be nice, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> So there's all these like really hectic things that you have to think about in your daily life. How, how are you responsible for adding to that struggle? How are you responsible for relieving it? Do you actually have to do anything for it, about it? Um, and then how do, you, how do you live in a world like we're living in, you know what I mean? It's like, I mean there's also beautiful things, but um, I think we are programmed to remember the bad things so that we don't do them again. I find great inspiration in things like street art and children's art and also comics and the manga tradition um, just because of the like there's just such a it looks like it and I know it isn't necessarily um, such an easy way of making um, an uncomplicated or un, un self conscious is that the right word? Like mark. Uh, it's like the freedom of flow of beautiful mark making. So that's why I especially like children's drawing and I have tried in the past to um, copy a child's drawing and it's like just incredibly difficult because your training just comes in all the time, you know? So, um, yeah, street art is a huge, huge influence um, and I will find images on the web that I will try and mimic the way that they paint the draw. Um, for instance, these lines, I can't remember why, where I found them. So, but also, then you can't just copy the line exactly like that. You know, it's not yours. You're not allowed to do that. So um, it goes through a whole process of like actually like removing it from its original source and like marrying it with some of the stuff that's inside here, and then coming out with this. And the flatness of the comic books. Love the flatness. Just because we spend our whole life trying to make things look three-dimensional on a flat surface, and I'm like, what for? Just freaking just do the mark. Love the line. The process behind my uh, sculptures is mostly um, using uh, found objects, uh, which I can get in any of the thrift stores or next to the road, some of the nice African um, wooden you know, pieces that you get. Then I, I, I really like to take that. It's basically like a three-dimensional collage. This one specifically, uh, it was a collaboration between me and Miranda Vinja, and she is one of our, she was our very first graduated the Spear Arts Academy where they are taught to do a um, mosaic. This is a drawing that I did in my sketchbook and then I asked Miranda to do the micro mosaic and why it's micro, I don't know if you can see, but the, the little tessera are almost like a millimeter by a millimeter that they have to chop down from uh, big pieces of material, man-made material, and then also they have to keep the integrity of the work and the line, so it's actually um, quite a phenomenal piece in, in, in terms of the collaborative process which I really like because at some point it doesn't become my work anymore it just stands almost as an individual because there were two or three types of input if you want to put it that way like mine, hers and then the works um, anyway so then when I got this back I had to take it to the studio and I had to just now work because it's so different from the rest of the show in terms of materials um, to find a way to incorporate some of the other materials into this one. The process is basically uh, trial and error. If does it work, can it work? Also you have to have like you have to be quite um, strict about something that even though you you work half a day on it and it's not working that you have to let it go. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's this weird stumbling along. I don't think my work 
life is for everyone. You know, there's, there's various levels of blight that people can deal with in stomach. I like work, I like my work to be like some, uh, to call up some sort of awareness of what it is that I'm dealing with. And um, although I'm only part of, I can only be the catalyst of whatever then is happening in the viewer's mind, um, I've tried to make only happy paintings and pinkscapes, as my partner calls them. <laughs> And I can't do that, it's just I tried so hard but it didn't work. Um, so, but I've also, because I think it's very easy to just become darker and darker and more morose, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, I think it's easier to do that than to get a balance and then also try and maybe just look at the more interesting, not necessarily happy things, but more interesting things. So I think for me the balance in the work is like, it's literally, um, if it's interesting, if it still carries, can it carry the line, can it carry the color, um, the palette, the textures, if it can carry those things, then I don't really care how much blight it is or how much you can live with it. it's a very automatic process it's like um, it's a lot of effort and concern goes into choosing these images um, and also then manipulating them so that they can form part of the dialogue or the story um, so I also believe all of us have like a Greek chorus in our heads so I can um, when the work is up up to a, to a point I can maybe suggest a mood or a feeling and then after that, it's the other person's course that's going to take over so, and finish the work. Um, so I've had, like one of my students said to me the other day, is like, um, I like your work, but I don't like the way it makes me feel. And I was like, well, I can't take 100% responsibility for that. <laughs>